Hello, hello. Uh, today I'll be doing a quick video on SC2 hotkeys because it is a pretty important part in becoming better at the game and just playing faster in general, despite what some stubborn players might tell you. <laughs> if you're not using hotkeys, you're literally playing with one hand behind your back and there's no reason to not use both hands, right? If you're driving a car and you only have one hand, you get to park in a handicap spot. And uh, yeah, if you have to move your mouse down here anytime you have to click anything, instead of just kind of keeping it centered and being able to do a lot of things at once, that's uh, not good. So hotkeys can be separated into three main groups. You have the basic orders that land units, air units, naval units have. Stuff like just movement orders, uh, attack, patrol, etc. And uh, then you have the abilities. Stuff you unlock through the research tree, like maybe hunker for your ACU, some abilities on experimentals, uh, or, you know, power detonate, which Cybern can unlock, like the sacrifice explosion thing. And it's definitely a lot better and a lot more precise to use hotkeys for stuff like this. Because if you're busy, like, microing some units, you know, building, expanding, and whatnot, like, you don't want to be moving your mouse all the way down here while you're in the middle of doing other stuff, right? If you have to move, like, there every single time, not only do you risk bumping the edge of the screen, which is what moves you around, it's also a pretty small button to click, especially if you're playing on 4K. I have uh, this resolution on 1920, but the UI doesn't scale that well with resolution. So if you're playing 4K, this uh, UI, especially for building stuff, it's going to be like half as small. It's going to be like down here. So hotkeys are definitely helpful where you have the certainty that stuff is going to happen and you don't have to reach somewhere to click a tiny button and, you know, misclick. And then you have to like fix that and it just messes you up messes up the flow of the game. And, uh, yeah, so that's the abilities. Then you also have building stuff. You know, same problems as before. Like, you don't want to be constantly moving the mouse up and down. It's better to just keep your mouse centered and, like, just use your left hand to queue up stuff, you know, build units. Uh, ah, I don't have megaliths. I was wondering why pressing BM before didn't <laughs> queue up anything. But there you go, megaliths researched, and... Yeah, uh, the building hotkeys, either you have an engineering unit, and for building structures, you have all of this stuff, but the same applies to land factories, which I successfully blown up, so I'll have to build those again. But as you can see, uh, how do you get this menu to pop up, right? Like, what's this? I don't see that. Uh, you have to press uh, B on your keyboard, right? Once you press B, it's a toggle. That's what shows all of these hints here. But you do have to press it every single time. And, well, what you press after that is what's going to appear on your mouse cursor. Right? So if I want to build a mass extractor, I just press uh, BM and I have it selected. If you want to build something else, you don't have to press B again because it is a toggle. So if I were to press E, it selects energy. R for research, P for point defense. Uh, usually it's the first letter of the thing that you're building. But yeah, the developers did have to play around with it a bit. Like for example, Brackman would have been B, but that wouldn't work, right? Because that's what's toggling <laughs> the build mode hotkey stuff. So sometimes it's like the second letter. So yeah, just press B. Uh, the hints are going to come up, and, you know, in a few hours, you'll probably be able to memorize all of this. If you press F1, you can see, uh, I don't think you can see the units you can build, but that's for the other hotkeys. That's for the abilities and the uh, orders that I'll talk about later. But building is definitely the one where you can gain the most micro, or macro, I guess, because the less time you spend building, right, queuing stuff up and expanding, taking mass extractors, the more time you have to control your units. And it just compounds, right? Like, if I don't have to 
move here and you know build a land factory there maybe a point defense put a research station there like i'm losing five ten seconds killing stuff in the back of my base when i could be spending that time you know fighting enemy units or going around the flank like you don't want to be spending a lot of time building is what i'm saying so yeah that's that and uh the next thing i should probably mention is that you might notice that uh, the tabs for the buildings have numbers on them, right? So you just press the number of where you want to go. And if I want to build a mass extractor and I'm in a different tab, uh, I would have to press B1M, right? But like once you're in this tab, like I don't have to press 1 again. But if I want to go to experimentals, then you press free L, and yeah, that's a land gantry. So that should be pretty self-explanatory. And same for the factories, but I think all of the... Oh yeah, okay, land factories get two tabs because, you know, they can get add-ons and stuff. So yeah, that's all of the things you can build. The abilities, I mean, if you just hover over it, it shows you what the hotkeys are, right? Or you can press F1 and study this, but, like, I've never read through this. <laughs> like, the stuff you're going to be using a lot is the stuff you're going to remember, right? And uh, things like power detonate are usually the ones that get used the most, right? Like, if I'm fighting over here, and then suddenly, like, some... Aeon units on the flank teleport somewhere, and oh, they're here now, and I have to detonate this mass extractor. Like, you don't have to spend too much time fishing for this tiny button here. And that, like, quick reaction can really, uh, really help out. So yeah, all of the hotkeys are shown on the buttons, if they have a hotkey. Some abilities don't have hotkeys, which is unfortunate. Uh, Cicada is one example. But luckily, you don't have to be activating this that much, right? It's like a one-minute ability on a one-minute cooldown. I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, okay. And uh, Afterburn on UEF units is also one that doesn't have a hotkey. That one is unfortunate, because that one that's an ability that gets used a lot. But, you know, things that use often... Just look at the buttons, and you might get surprised that... It does have hotkey, and you can, you know, just use your keyboard to react much faster than you would be able to moving your mouse from the middle to the bottom left and then back. So yeah, that's the abilities. Obviously, orders, same thing. Like, that thing in the brackets is the button you just press to do stuff. And uh, yeah, that should be pretty much everything. <coughs> Of course, I forgot one of the more important things, and uh, things that are actually kind of hidden. If you want to select your ACU, uh, you actually have to press comma on your keyboard, which is right next to M if you're using the English normal keyboard, I guess. And another one which is also a bit hidden is uh, pausing the build key, right? It's uh, L. And you see if I try to Make some tanks, it's going to stay paused until I press L again. And if you want to select engineers, it's period. But uh, this one only works if the engineer isn't doing anything. If these engineers are busy and I press period, or I click this button, nothing happens, right? Because this only selects engineers that are not doing anything. As you can see now... Well, they automatically start, like, helping out stuff, but as you can see, if I keep pressing period, I'm only selecting this guy. And if I keep pressing period, get away from there, come on. <laughs> there you go. If you keep pressing period, it's going to be cycling between your idle engineers. It's very useful in mid-game, late-game, when you have a huge base and it's impossible to keep track of everything. So if you're like trying to spend all of your mass, you just keep going through all of your build power units, basically, and just queue, queue stuff up for them and, you know, try to spend the mass. 
because mass spent bad is better than mass not spent at all. And, uh, and well, this one isn't hidden, but not very many people use it. If you have a bunch of factories and they're building something, which I should probably simulate a bit better. All right, there you go. If I have a bunch of factories and they have some units queued up, right? And I want to change that unit queue for some reason. Uh, instead of going through this one by one and right clicking this and, well, I mean, I could use hotkeys, right, to queue stuff up. You can just double click your factories, press S, which is the stop order, which normally it just stops. Uh, well, it can be used to like stop movement orders, right, or attack orders, but it can also be used on factories to completely cancel this queue. Like you see, if I queue up a bunch of stuff here, if I press S, uh, it all disappears. You cancel the queue, you queue up something else, and there you go. And yeah, when you're building units, if you hold Shift when queuing something up, uh, it's going to queue up five of them. If you hold Control, it's going to queue up 25 of them. And if I restart the game, I'll be able to show you just how good this can be altogether, right? So if I have my finger on comma, and the moment the loading screen ends, you just press comma, and you queue all of the stuff up, Within the first second or two, you can get your entire build down, right? Because now that immediately you give your engineer and your ACU stuff to do, you have plenty of time to queue up all the other stuff, maybe queue up the airplanes. Uh, unfortunately, there's no hotkey for repeat build queue, I think, for the auto building thing. But this like very early placement of all of your stuff instead of building it like five, six seconds in, like waiting for the game to zoom in slowly, if you just press comma, like boom, and you can memorize exactly where to place stuff because this is always going to be the same zoom level, right? So I know I kind of just have the muscle memory where I press comma, I zoom out slightly, and I see everything because if I just stay like this, it is it can be kind of tricky to place that air factory on some maps. But yeah, you just queue up the rest of the build, like, uh, you know, as the other stuff is being built. And those first, uh, those first three seconds can really help you if you're starting with an air factory. Because if, like, an airplane is just coming out here, you can quite easily attack it from the side and just immediately kill that plane. Or get away. Like, you can try to save the scout if uh, the enemy airplane is slightly delayed, especially if they start by building their uh, mass extractors before the air factory, if you have the same builds. And another very important thing, since I'm playing Aeon, a pretty cool trick you should probably learn now that you know hotkeys. The hotkey for teleport is Control t right? And one thing I forgot to mention is that with hotkeys, uh, there's a thing you can do that you cannot do with the normal button, right? If I teleport these units, and they're on cooldown now, I can't use them. If I have all of these selected, oh, what the hell? I can't teleport these tanks in the back, even though they're not on cooldown, right? So what you can do with hotkeys is that if I do the same thing again, right? I take a couple tanks, teleport them away, select all of the units. If I do Control T for teleport and I just teleport them, it forces it on all of the units. And the ones that are on cooldown aren't going to teleport, right? But the ones that can teleport will. This is useful with everything that has cooldowns. Like if you have the generator lasers unlocked for Aeon, which is uh, this thing, Electroshock, or the UEF, uh, like, fortified artillery structures, right, that have the hardened ability. Like, if I activate these generators, and, you know, if they were, if there were enemy units, they would be attacking stuff. Like, if I have multiple of them selected, or maybe I double-click to select, you know, all of them on screen, I can't activate this, because these are on cooldown. But if I press Alt-E, 
it's going to try to activate all of the ones that I have selected. And it doesn't care that some of them are cooldown, it's just going to do it. So that is very useful. And speaking of teleport, just as a demonstration of what hotkeys allow you to do, if you are being attacked by, I don't know, there's like an experimental coming down your way, some megaliths, you have plenty of time to uh, don't hold control, just give a movement order so your units spread out like this instead of being bunched up, right? You just spread out the units as the enemy army's coming. Maybe you have like a factory shield and... Well, sometimes I'm still lazy and I click it anyway, but, you know, <laughs> if you have, like, a factory shield, you can just hide behind that. And that gives you enough time to spread your units into some groups. Usually I like to do three. Then you bunch them up. And as the uh, thing you want to teleport on gets into range, right, you just use the numbers and the hotkey to surround that unit super fast and uh yeah what happened here is that the units here could jump that far right but as you can see uh the units that are in the back cannot make that jump basically right but this isn't really related to hotkeys but since it happened i guess you know it's, this tip is for free uh if you right click without holding control if you give a movement order before teleporting um since it puts these units into i guess a group if you have strategic overlay on you can see it's these like clickable numbers that it automatically makes like if i give two orders to some to some parts of my army like these things appear but internally um what the game does is it gives a tiny boost to the range of teleport to the stuff that's in the back. Well, I don't know if, if you can call it a boost, but if I... Um, how can I set this up? I'm going to go back a bit. So this tank is right at the edge of that mass extractor for the teleport range. And you see this front one can go all the way here, right? If I give the movement order before teleporting, and I teleport there... Yeah, check that out. <laughs> like, these units in the back will be able to teleport. Uh, I'm not sure what, like, the exact numbers on it are, but it's very good. It does have a limit. Like, if I try to do it now, uh, these tanks from the back won't be able to teleport. Like, let me try to jump to the max range there. And you see, like, there was the cutoff. Uh, okay, hold on. Yeah, it was, like, somewhere here, the line. And you can see that's a pretty big boost to the range. But, like, you still need to have some unit that's leading the way uh, that will allow to give that little boost, right? And you can't abuse it too much. Like, if I try to do this... You see it doesn't work. But yeah, uh, with the comma, period, BM, you know, BA, BL stuff, you can get your build down pretty fast. BR for research station, obviously. That's the only starting buildings, realistically, you can make. And uh, yeah, hopefully that will give you the advantage you're looking for. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.